Okay, so Venn diagrams um, can be useful in probability um, and we'll also talk about uh, probability tables in a subsequent video um, as in addition to tree diagrams as ways of um, combining together events or thinking about you know um, how different events might combine. So um, when we draw a Venn diagram, the rectangle is, is used to represent the sample space. So you must have the rectangle. That's every single element, every single possible outcome should be included in with somewhere within the rectangle. And circles can be used to represent various events. Um, so we want to recall the following notations. So if we talk about the union of two events, um, there's a lot to do with set notation in probability. So the union of two events we know is A union B. And on the Venn diagram, that's referring to the things that are in A or in B. Okay, so it's A or B. Now, when we use the word or in maths, we implicitly, we mean, it always means an inclusive or. So it's implied that when we say A or B, we mean A or B or both A and B. The intersection is obviously this overlapping region, A intersection B. Okay. The complement, so the complement of A is not A, and that would be anything that is not in A. So anything outside of the circle A, so it's not just the stuff that's in B but not in A, it's just anything that's not in A. Okay. Um, disjoint sets would be when we have two sets that don't overlap at all. In the context of probability, these would be mutually exclusive events. Okay. And that happens if um, the intersection is an empty set. Okay, so the intersection isn't zero. That would mean it's got zero in it. It is a set of numbers that contain, it's a set that contains nothing. Okay, so that would mean we have disjoint sets. And this would mean that A and, in probability, that A and B are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. And we can also have a subset, which would be where if we have A and if B can, can, can be contained wholly within A, then we would say that B is a subset of A. All right, the addition rule for probability says that the probability of A union B, which is everything in the circles, so that plus that plus that, the probability of A union B is the probability of A, which is that, plus the probability of B, which is that, take away the probability of A intersection B, which is the overlap. And that's because if you add A and B together, probability of A plus probability of B together, you've counted the intersection twice. And so we need to subtract the intersection to make sure that we then have the union. All right, let's just work our way through some examples. So if the sample space is all of the numbers from zero to nine inclusive, whole numbers, A is the numbers from one to five inclusive, and B is even numbers, find these probabilities. So the probability of A union B, A intersection B, and probability of not A. In probability, the key thing is to really work out a way to organise your information, whether that's using a Venn diagram, tree diagram, probability table, whatever it might be. Organise your information first, and from there, answering all the probability questions is very straightforward. So if we think about that, we've got um, two different sets here, A and B. And obviously our sample space is represented by the box, so it's not a third separate set. So the sample space is all the numbers from 0 to 9. So they should all appear somewhere in this diagram. Okay. So in set A, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. In set B, we have all the even numbers. So any even numbers in A should also go in the middle here. So 2 and 4 are going to go in here. And therefore, the remaining numbers in A, 1, 3, and 5, go out here. And any other even numbers in the sample space, so that is 6 and 8, go out here. 0 is not an even number. It's not odd or even. And then all the other digits that aren't represented in there are going to go outside the circle. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are missing. So the probability of a union B, we count up how many digits we've got in the union. So in the circles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 digits. 
out of 10, so 7 tenths. Probability of A intersection B, there are two digits in the intersection out of 10 digits in total, so that's 1 fifth. And the probability of not A, there are five digits not in A. Okay, that's these five out here. Five digits not in A, oops, sorry. Five digits not in A out of 10 digits. So that's a probability of one half. Organize your information, then the probabilities are very quick to find. Example two, out of 40 students, 14 are taking English and 29 are taking chemistry. Five students are in both both classes. How many students are in neither class? How many take English only? How many students take chemistry only? Okay, so what have we got? English, chemistry, I'm sure there are other subjects, but this is all we're interested in and all that we have data about. Out of 40 students, 14 are taking English. So that is at the total English circle. Those two numbers should add up to 14. So we can't put the 14 anywhere. 29 are taking chemistry. Similarly, the two numbers, the two regions comprising the chemistry circle should add to 29. Five students are in both classes. That's the most useful bit of information there. So five in both. So therefore, if there has to be 14 in English in total, there must be nine out here. 29 taking chemistry in total, there must be 24 out here. We also know that 40 students were surveyed, so that tells us how many do neither. Um, so let's see, five, uh, 9 plus 5 is 14, plus 24 is 38. So there's two students not listed, not in English or in chemistry. How many students are in neither class? Okay, so that is the number of students not in English and not in chemistry is two. How many students take English only? The number of students in English and not in chemistry is English only. Um, so that is nine students. And the number of students not in English and in chemistry, so they take only chemistry, is 24 students. Okay, example three. Of 120 employees in a factory, 35 have a beard, 47 work with heavy machinery, and 43 have neither a beard nor work with heavy machinery. If one is chosen at random, what is the probability that the employee has a beard but does not work with heavy machinery, has a beard and works with heavy machinery? Okay, so let's um, again set up our information. So we can have beards and we can work with heavy machinery. We can have combinations of those two things. So 120 employees in the factory, so all the numbers um, in the four regions of the Venn diagram should add up to 120. 35 have a beard, so the two regions in the beard circle should add to 35. 47 work with heavy machinery, so the two regions in the heavy machinery circle should work, add up to 47. 43 have neither a beard, neither have a beard nor work with heavy machinery. So that's 43 out here. Okay, so then what we can need to think about is, okay, if there's 43 people out here, that leaves us with, uh, what does that add up to? 77 that should be in the circles. So this plus this plus this should add up to 77, so that the total Venn diagram still adds up to 120. Um, so, but we know that if we were to add up 35, so we know that that and that and that, those three regions should all add up to 77, okay? But we know that we've got 35 with beards and 47 with heavy machinery. And so we know that that is, uh, what does that add up to? 75, 82. So we've got more than 77 people there, but that's because that what the difference between those two numbers is telling us about the intersection. So we've got 82 in total, we've got 82 if we add up beards and heavy machinery, but that's including, that's doubling up the intersection. We know that we can only fit 77 in the diagram, so the difference between 82 and 77 is what goes in the middle here. So that's gonna be five. And from there we can fill everything else out, okay? I'll show you a more, um, formulaic way to figure that out rather than it being so much in your head but many of you will be able to do that in your head. Um, let me just fill out the rest of the numbers and then I'll come back to it. So 35 have a beard which means that 30 must be out here and 47 work with heavy machinery which leaves 42 out here and again we should be able to check if we add them all up um, we've got our 120 people. Now the other way we might do it is to use the addition formula to be a bit more formula, formulaic about it. I'm just going to call that H just so my notation is a bit easier. Um, so we know that the probability of B uh, union H is the probability of B plus the probability of H minus the probability of 
B into section H. That's the addition rule for probability. Now, it doesn't have to be probabilities. The formula also works if we are talking about the number of people in the union is the number of people in B plus the number of people in H minus the number of people in the intersection, which is what we have here. Um, so we knew in this case that the union had to be 77, okay, because that was 120 minus the 43, so the circles had to add up to 77. We know that B from the question is 35, we know that H from the question is 47, and it was the intersection we were trying to work out. So the number of things in the intersection we can work out. So 77 equals 82 minus the number of things in the intersection, which is sort of what we did in our head. So the number of things in the intersection is 82 minus 77, and so that's five. And then from there, you can fill out the rest of the diagram. Um, so now that we've got the diagram complete, sorry, we can answer the questions. So we want the probability that a randomly, chose, randomly chosen employee has a beard but does not work with heavy machinery. So that's going to be these 30 people out here, beard and no heavy machinery. Probability of a beard and no heavy machinery is 30 out of the 120, so that is a quarter. Probability that they have a beard and work with heavy machinery, so probability beard and heavy machinery is going to be 5 out of 120, uh, which is 1 out of 24. All right, example 4 and 5, making use of the addition rule for probability. If the probability of A is 0 0.6, the probability of B is 0 0.72, and the probability of A um, union B is 0 0.8, find the probability of A intersection B. Okay, so we know the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. Let's fill in what we know. So the union is 0 0.8, probability of A is 0 0.6, probability of B is 0 0.72, and the intersection is unknown. All right, so that is 0.8 equals, uh, what's that going to be, 1.32 minus probability of A intersection B. So the probability of A intersection B is going to be 1.32 take away 0.8, which is 0 0.52. You could draw a Venn diagram to try and help you with that information, but it's a bit like the example up here. You know that the total circles have to, three regions in the circles have to add up to 0.8, that the two regions on the left have to add up to 0.6, and the two regions on the right have to add up to 0.72. Um, so essentially this formula is allowing you to kind of work that out in a slightly um, more structured way. All right, example five, if the probability of A is 0.42, the probability of B is 0.33, and the probability of A union B is 0.75, find the probability of A intersection B, and what can be said about the events A and B. Okay, so let's focus on finding that probability first, and then we'll see what that tells us. All right, so again, probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B, take away probability of A intersection B, so this time the union is 0.75, probability of A is 0.42, probability of B is 0.33. Okay, so that's 0 0.75. 0 0.42 plus 0 0.33 is also 0.75. Okay, and so this means that the probability of A intersection B has to be zero. And so that means that A and B are mutually exclusive if there is no intersection. They're mutually exclusive events. Okay, so the work today is from exercise 9D. So continuing to work with Venn diagrams and the addition rule for probability.